we're here inshallah on the Eid al-Adha and this is a great blessing uh, in a time of difficulty for our community and for the larger human community for many many reasons. Uh, the Eid is a time of joy but there's also because of so much of what's going on in the world it's also a time where we should be thinking deeply about the human condition, about where we are as a species, about where our ummah is as a community, many, many things to think about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this a day of remembrance, a day of uh, joy. The Prophet sallam, said in a beautiful hadith, Musalsal, he said that ayyamu eidin, ayyamu akrin wa shurbin wa dhikrilillah. It's a time of eating and drinking and remembering Allah. We tend to forget in this cornucopia of, of, of the modern world that people actually did not have a lot to eat in the past. Many places they had famines were quite common. And, and this is why today was a day when the Prophet ﷺ, the sunnah is to sacrifice. And the Prophet ﷺ told us that the most beloved action to Allah on this day is ihraq al dam is actually to sacrifice. And what do we do with the sacrifice? When he prayed, they brought the kibsh after the prayer and he sacrificed it with his own hand وسلم, and he said, anni wa an ummati. I'm doing this sacrifice for myself and for my ummah. Because many people are poor, they can't afford to do this. Unfortunately, uh, many of us are able to do this. Now is a time though to really send it overseas to the places where they really need it because we don't need meat uh, here. You know? But there are many places where people really are having difficult times. But he sacrificed for himself and for his ummah. And this is a reminder of the great gift, Ibrahim السلام, who's our father and the father of our Prophet وسلم. He's our spiritual father because this is his millah. It's called the millah Ibrahimiyah. And even though the sun is, uh, is uh, the, the, the afdal, the, uh, the father is always honored. Ibrahim السلام, said many sunan that we still follow today. But the most important thing about Ibrahim السلام, that I see is his absolute tawheed and tawakkul. And Imam al-Ghazali in his book, the Ihya, he put tawheed and tawakkul together. And this is the foundation of our, of our ummah and our teaching is tawheed and tawakkul. That we unify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why the, the, when, if you look at the, the amazing story when the Prophet وسلم, Ibrahim took his uh, wife and his, and she was, she was uh, a legitimate uh, wife of uh, Ibrahim السلام, and he is a legitimate son despite what some of the other uh, traditions say about Ismail, it's not true. Ismail was legitimate son of Ibrahim, he's the firstborn and the Ahad is with him as well as with Ishaq. He went to, he took uh, Hajar to a place when you look at it it's a complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a place that has wajal ghayri di zar'in. There's nothing there. And, and so he took him and she asked him as he was leaving, is, is this you or did Allah tell you to do this? He said, no, Allah told me to do this. She said, then I'm radi. And she was content. She raised Ismail there. And the, 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 the Arabs that were there, these are the original Arabs, Al-Arab Al-Arba'i. They taught him Arabic. Ibrahim, when he came, they married him because they were very impressed with him. He's a great archer, even the Bible mentions about uh, him. They were very impressed with him as, as, a, as a man. And so despite the fact that it was not there Add uh, their norm, they married him to one of their uh, daughters. Ibrahim السلام, visited from Sham. When he came there, he saw uh, the woman and, and he asked, 
where's your husband? She said, he's out hunting. And he said, how are things here for you? How are things here? And she said, terrible. They're horrible. نَحْنُ فِي شِدَّةٍ وَضِيقٍ وَشِدَّةٍ and, and the Prophet ﷺ in Sahih Bukhari said, Shakat ilayhi. She complained to him about their conditions. So then he said, When your husband comes back, give him my salam and tell him to change the, the, uh, the ataba of his bab. Atabata babiki. Like the. When you come into a house, the ataba is the thing before the, before the door, the doormat. He said, change that. So then Ismail came back and he noticed, Anasal, the hadith says, like he noticed something and he asked her, what happened today? She said, Sheikh came, Sheikhun kada wa kada. She just said, Sheikh, old man came. And uh, he said, well, what happened? He said, he asked about our Aish and I told him. And then he, he said, did he, Al-Saki Bishay, did he tell you to do anything? He said, he said to give you salam and to say to change the door tress, the trestle of your door. And he said, that was my father. And he told me to, to, to separate from you. So, Ilhaqi bi ahliki, go and join your family. He divorced her. Why did he do that? Because Ibrahim was going, he made a dua with Ismail when they built the house. Send a messenger from them. And then he said that يُعَلِّمُهُمْ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمْ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Send them a messenger from them who will recite to them your signs and he will teach them the book and the wisdom and he will purify them because you are Al-Aziz Al-Hakim. So he knew that the source had to be pure. The Prophet ﷺ said, تَخَيِّرُوا مِن نُطَفِكُمْ Like, make sure that the the one you marry is the right one because you're going to plant seeds. So the earth has to be good earth. So he married another woman from them. Ibrahim came again visiting them. And what did he say? He said, Kifa Aishuki, because his Ismail was out hunting. He said, Kifa Aishuki. She said, Oh, we're in blessing. Nothing changed. Except the understanding, the mentality changed. Nothing changed, same conditions. But the woman, she didn't complain. She said, نَحْنُ فِي نِعْمَةً We're in blessings. في سَعَةً She said the opposite of the other woman. The other woman said, نَحْنُ فِي ضِيقٍ She said, نَحْنُ فِي سَعَةً We're in blessing. He said, what food are you eating? She said, the لَحْمُ وَالْمَاءٍ Meat. And, and, uh, and, and he said, وَشَرَابُكِ he said, She said, water. And he said, Allahumma barik fi lahmiki wa fi ma'iki. May Allah bless that meat and bless that water. The Prophet ﷺ said, Lam yukun indhum hab. They didn't have seeds. Had they had seeds, he would have blessed the seeds. All they were eating was meat and water. The Prophet ﷺ said, Laysa ibn Adam haqqun illa min hadi al khisal. The son of Adam has no rights except for these. Baytun yaskunuhu wa thawbun yuwari awratuhu wa jilf al khubzi wal ma. That's the only thing we're entitled to as a, as, a, as a human being, as a creation of Allah, is a house that protects you. And for some, it's just a tent. Clothes that you cover your nakedness with, and then bread and water. This is basically somebody in prison. 
That's what a prisoner has. He has a roof over his head. They give him prison outfit and they give him bread and water in some places. Here they get other things. But traditionally, bread and water was what you gave the prisoner. In the Qarawiyin and Fas, where the students studied, they were given a, 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 just one loaf of bread every day and water. As that was their sustenance for like going to college. When you go to college, you get, that's what they got, a loaf of bread and water. And whatever else they had ate was from their own source. So the Prophet said, that's all you deserve. And the humans are feel so entitled to things. This woman was a pure woman, and then she said, when 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 she she also said, "Jana Sheikhun Hasanul Haya wa Athnat Alehi." She saw Ibrahim. She said, "A beautiful Sheikh came to us today," and then she praised him. The other one just said, "Sheikhun Kedu wa Kedu." Some old man came. This is the difference between world views of how you view the world. And this is what our religion teaches to change your mentality. Change the way you think about things. Change all this entitlement that modern people have. The crisis on this planet is one thing and one thing alone. Human beings are relying on themselves and they're not relying on Allah. They think they can do it on their own. All of the things that are happening right now are because people no longer call on Allah when they have tribulations. Ibn Atayla says, Al Faqatu Busuq al Mawahib. Calamities are the spreads of divine gifts. Allah sends calamities to take people back to Him. That's why He sends them. Ibn Atayla says that. Sometimes you will find in calamities what you cannot find in prayer and fasting. Because prayer and fasting always has the possibility of ujub. But when you have a calamity, you know that you're nothing. You know that you're a faqir. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ, a man came to him and said, And he said, he said, I love you. He said, think about what you're saying. He said, I love you. He said it three times. The Prophet ﷺ said, In kunta tuhibuni, fa'idda lil faqri tijfafan. Then get ready for tribulation. Get ready for things that are going to break you. Subhanallah. Ashaddu nas. The people that have the most tribulation in dunya are the prophets and then those like the prophets. But we don't like to think about this. People want ease. This is human nature. People want ease. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before you are confronted with your own life on the Yawm Qiyamah. To have ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of these tribulations that Allah sends to this species is for their benefit. And this is what people don't realize. This is a completely different way of viewing the world. When I was in Mauritania, uh, a man asked me, in Mauritania when they eat, there's so many flies, because it's a desert environment, there's so many flies that they will literally pour sugar in the corner to bring the flies there so they can eat without the flies. This, that's how many flies. And an old, very old sheikh, he was a, a, a scholar, alim, jadid. And he said to me, do they have flies in America? And I said, subhanAllah, we rarely get bothered by flies. He said, a'udhu billah, ni'mah. He said, oh, I seek refuge in Allah. Maybe they're getting their blessings here in the dunya. You think about life, you know. This is a short time, all these tribulations is a short time. Now here, just in conclusion, the Prophet ﷺ said something that struck me as so extraordinary. And everything he said is amazing, ﷺ. You know, I have a, two cats. And these cats, they walk around all the time. Like I pray, they come, they do tawaf. 
And, and then you see them walking around the house. They're always going in circles. The Prophet ﷺ, he called them awafun wa tawafat. The, the, the animals that circle you. you know, this is his mulahawa. I don't think I would have thought of that except because of the hadith that made me think about it. But this is the beauty of the guidance that he gave us. He saw everything. He said, Allahumma arini al-ashya kama hiya. Show me things as they are. He saw things as they are. So he said something so extraordinary to me. And everything he said is extraordinary. He said, Badru is a hadith that Abu Huraira relates. He said, Badru bil a'mali sab'an. Hasten, preempt with actions seven things. Preempt with actions seven things. Initiate your deeds, your good deeds, before one or more of seven things will afflict you. And what I realized is he covered everything in those seven things. Every single thing that is going to come to us is in one or more of these seven things. And you, can, you can't exhaust it. He said, بَادِرُوا بِالْعَمَالِ سَبْعًا هَلْ تَنْتَظِرُونَ Are you waiting for? Waiting. It's going to come. هَلْ تَنْتَظِرُونَ إِلَّا فَقْرًا مُنْسِيًا Poverty that makes you forget everything. Because people lose everything in the dunya. And once you've lost everything, all you can think about is your situation because it's dire. And so the Prophet ﷺ called it faqran munsiya. It's a poverty that makes you forget everything because you can't think straight. All you can think about is where your basic needs are going to come from. And there's so many people on this planet right now in this situation. Many of the Muslim countries that had beautiful lives. They had good lives. The, the vast majority of people have good. Now they're in the worst abject conditions. The worst abject conditions. And this can come to anybody, anywhere, anytime. Fakran munsiya. And then he said, Oh Mutriya. Or wealth that preoccupies you. A man told me, subhanAllah, I got a letter from a man the other day who said to me that for 10 years he was working to get this money and uh, and he said he had all these plans to help the Muslims and do all these things he said it finally came and he said I've become a horrible person he said I just I was spending all this money I got into all these horrible things <laughs> Man will transgress because he deems himself rich. You see, we know from social studies, people that are wealthy, they drive arrogantly. They treat people with arrogance. This is well known. Studies have been done on this because they get a sense of entitlement. They also think, like Qarun, that somehow that I was given this because of something I did, because I'm so clever, because I'm so important. This is what, so he said, or a sickness that will incapacitate you. People are healthy and suddenly they have a stroke and they can't function. They need people to take care of them. Or they get some disease, chronic disease. Suddenly they're in pain all the time. Now they can't think of anything except their problem. Oh, maradan mufsida. This happens to people. Or you begin to forget things. Doting, uh, old age, dementia. You can't even remember. Some people, la qadrullah, may Allah protect all of you. The best way to protect yourself from these things, Ahlul Quran, uh, they don't get khara, you know, the people of Quran. Real, you know, you have to, Take the book, Khudr Kitab Iqwa, you know, take it seriously. But dementia, all these diseases that come to the mind, people forget, they come into a room, they can't remember why they're there. This happens when you age. So the Prophet said, you're waiting for 
فقر غنى سكنس دمنشيا and then he said oh mot and mujhiza or sudden death everything's fine people young people suddenly a heart attack and they they literally drop dead they don't even know what's happening to them these are all things that the prophet said we are waiting for hal tantadu badru bil amal like hasten to deeds hasten to deeds people have money now what are you doing with your money saving it for something or other the prophet saw i sent when they asked what should we spend fi sabilillahi the quran replied al afu just whatever excess you have allah's not asking you for what you need he's asking you for what you don't need but the dunya tells you oh i need this i need that you don't we don't need anything i live with bedouin i know how much a human being needs to live we don't need a lot to live and then he said oh at the jala fa sharru ghaib yutabar or the antichrist and this is the most evil of things that people are waiting for at the jala the prophet sallallahu said that the jala won't come until people stop mentioning him on the mimbar they'll forget and you can see the preparation everywhere people you look at people now they they don't think for themselves anymore they can't think they just follow what they're told they don't think about anything they, it's amazing the ghafla that this species is in deep ghafla and this is important too because the prophet warned us about these latter days that we're in and one of the things you see many muslims now they're deviating grossly from the book and the sunna I mean talking about things now we would never in a million years think our community would have been talked about or accepting things that are so unacceptable in our religion and you know what I'm talking about you see this now and then also adapting all of these things that have nothing to do with our religion we don't collectivize people we don't talk about white people or black people or any other group some as if they're a collective the quran says la taziru wazaratun wazara ukhra no soul bears the sins of another soul tilka ummatun qad khalat laha ma kasabat wa lakum ma kasabtum whatever the past happened those people have it on themselves the children don't inherit their sins they don't inherit their sins we don't we don't think about these things we just adopt all these materialists now we send our children to these universities where they're going to be indoctrinated they're not going to be taught they're going to be indoctrinated into things totally antithetical to the muslim community every religious community that came to this country that was serious about their religion built religious schools and colleges every single one because they understood we can't let our children be taught by people that don't share our values That's why the Catholics have schools all over parochial uh, secondary school and colleges because they were they took their religion seriously Where are the Muslim co- we've been here so long where are our colleges where are our hospitals where where are the things that we where we define our values we define what we believe in we don't let them define them for us This is a materialistic culture. The whole planet is becoming this way. But we have a community where we actually believe in 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 goodness and decency and virtue and chastity and justice and forgiveness and mercy and honor. These are the these are the things that our prophet taught us in the mabrid to muallima. I was sent to teach people. Do you zakki him? to to purify them in the commentaries they say to teach them all of the virtuous behavior and to warn them of all of the vicious behavior this is our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the most generous of people the most honorable of people the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he never swore every time he spoke about anything sensitive he used what's called kinaya he didn't ever speak crudely or obscenely This is our prophet. He said one of the signs of the end of time is foul language would become widespread. 
People would just use foul language. The tongue was a gift from Allah to, to, to speak. The Prophet was the most eloquent of people. One of the things when, 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 when Fakhruddin al-Razi says about shaitan, that one of the things Allah says is tafsit bisawtika, uh, you know, like rile them up with your, go ahead, rile them up with your, with your voice. He said, it's teaching our young people foul lyrics. That's what he said, ash'ar khabitha, putting foul lyrics into the minds of the young people so that garbage in, garbage out. These are all the things that we have to be aware of the environment we're in and protect our young people because Allah, their hearts are pure. Their hearts are pure. They're enculturated into foulness. The fitra is natural. Even all of this talk about racism, Racism is not the natural state of human beings. The natural state of human beings is accepting one another. Children do not have racism. They'll play with any color of child. That's enculturated into people. And so this whole talk about people are racist by nature, it's not true. This is a lie from Iblis to make people despair. Or people say that, oh, racism is the cause of oppression. No. Racism is used as a mechanism of oppression. It's not the cause. It's used as a mechanism. Divide and conquer. Divida et impera. The Romans knew this. We can't be fooled. We're a people that bring people together. We don't separate them. Shaitan. Shaitan ya'isa an yu'bad fi jazirat al-Arab. He despaired of being worshipped. But he was content with creating division amongst you. Today is a day of joining. Today is a day of setting aside your, all of your anger, whatever's happened with your family. This is a day, silu arhamukum. Like call up people that you're related to. If there's something between you, ask forgiveness. Bring people together. This is our ummah. It's an ummah. Ummah is a collective of people that have the same purpose. And our purpose is worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and service to his creation. That's, that's the whole raison d'etre of this ummah. The purpose of this ummah is to worship Allah and to serve Allah's creation. Whether they're black, white, red, yellow, whether they're Buddhist, Hindu, Jain, whether they're Jew, it doesn't matter. We are here to serve. This is our purpose. We are here to serve. One of the things we've forgotten is feeding the homeless, feeding the hungry. They don't enjoin people to feed the hungry. That's one of the signs of people that are in shakawa, that are wretched with Allah, is that they don't encourage others to help. We have people all over in need now. And many of the Muslims, we've been blessed. And you don't have to give all your money away. You don't have to take one family. This is what Qadi Abu Bakr al Arabi said. The Prophet was not somebody who was saying, give all your wealth away. Never. And there's nothing wrong with being wealthy in Islam. We're not socialists. Our religion is against this idea. There's, if Allah has blessed you with wealth, you pay your zakat and then you give sadaqah on top of that. And that's all Allah is asking. Take one family that's in need and help them. If you can do two, then do two. This is what Qadi Abu Bakr ibn al-Arabi says. So these are things to think about on this day of Eid. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillah alham, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولا. The seventh thing that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told us هل تنتظرون is الساعة وساعة أدها وأمر. That's the seventh thing, which is the hour. There's three hours. What's called ساعة الصغرى, ساعة الوسطى, وساعة الكبرى. ساعة الصغرى is your death. There is a door from the finite to the infinite. It's the door of infinity. It's Babu Lamihaya. 
It's the door of infinity. And that door is waiting. Each one of us, if you could see your ajal, because your ajal was written in the, the fi batni ummi. It was written in the, in the womb of our mothers. When we were in a womb, Rabbaytani hasha janina ukuntani qabla walidayya. You raised me in the womb of my parents. And you were before me, before my parents. This is, this, every single one of us has an ajal, if we could see it. You know, January 3rd, 2025, January, you know, it's every single one of us, it's there. And we don't think about it, but it's real. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ was somebody, he said, أَكْثَرُ مِنْ ذِكْرِ هَذَا مِنْ that. Remind yourselves of death. Not in a morbid way, in a way that makes you بَادِرُ بِالْعَمَالِ سَبْعًا Hasten to actions. We have little time. We're here for a short period of time. We have things to do. Each one of you has the gifts that Allah has given you. Some of you have wealth. You can support good things. Some of you have muscles. You can labor in good things. Some of you have Allah's gifted you with uh, intellectual brilliance. You can uh, do that for making things to better our human condition. Everybody has their gifts. And we don't have any ihtiqar for any human being. Every human being has the potential to know Allah. The street sweeper has the potential to know Allah. There were people in Medina that nobody took seriously. And they were beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Like the black woman who used to sweep the masjid. And when she died, they didn't think anything of it. He's, why didn't you tell me? He was upset, sallallahu alayhi wa because he knew who she was. He knew who she was. So this is a time for us to think about just changing the trajectory of our lives. Every day is an opportunity to make the U-turn. Every single day. With Allah, there's no sign that says no U-turns. We can always turn back. If we make tawbah, Allah makes tawbah to us. Tawbah. And He will forgive. He said, even if you came, يقراب الأرض بملء الأرض Khataya. Even if you came with the whole earth filled with your sins, If you ask forgiveness, I would forgive you. And shaitan hates tawbah. He wants to put you in a state of forgetfulness. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah uh, bless all the people wherever they are that are having a difficult Eid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them. Give them solace in their hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people that remember uh, the gifts that we've been given and share them with others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, bless us, increase us, elevate us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah protect this community, uh, protect the qa'imin alayh, bless all the people that set all these things up for us and did all this work. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all the volunteers in the masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Take you to your home, Sadimin Ghanimin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all the prayers on Arafah on, uh, that happened yesterday. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah give us some portion of those prayers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove this blight, this plague that's on our, uh, on our species right now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove al waba wal bala, all these terrible things that have afflicted uh, our species. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wake people up to their sinfulness. And their need to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to recognize that nothing afflicts us except what our own hands have wrought. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us of this. May He remove the drought from this community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good rain, give the parched earth uh, what it deserves. And may all of these creatures forgive us and these trees and all these things that don't deserve anything, but they suffer with us because of us. We see the trees in so many places are dying. You look at their leaves from the sinfulness of people, not from anything they did. And, and the Prophet ﷺ said, had it not been for the trees and for the animals, that the sinfulness of people would prevent rain from coming. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah give us rain, give us good rain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of our children protect our women, uh, anybody who, all these women who are wearing hijab bravely in this environment, may Allah protect them and keep them safe and sound. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. The sunnah is to do the obhiyah, 
for anybody that's going to do the Udhiyah, uh, it's after the prayer you go. You have the, the days of, of uh, these, these days of Eid. You can do it in any of the days of Eid. Uh, the best thing is obviously the ram. And, uh, and uh, you, you, you should, the sunnah is to eat a third, to give a third to your friend, and then to give a third to poor people. Uh, but we have now uh, agencies that will do this for you and distribute it amongst the refugees. So I think it's good, inshallah, to support our Syrian refugees, our Yemeni refugees, the Libyan. All, there's so many places where Muslims, Kashmiris, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for our brothers and sisters in Kashmir, in Palestine, obviously. I mean, it's an ongoing, long, long struggle. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, uh, wake our community up. الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد عيدكم مبارك الله بلا شيء إن شاء الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته